Hey everyone, Jason here with Link to Blockchain Solutions. In today's video, we're going to tackle the question, should I become a cryptocurrency miner? So I was inspired to make this video because I'm often asked the question, should I become a Bitcoin miner? And I can't answer this question for everyone individually, but what I hope to do with this video is give you a couple guidelines so you can make the decision. I've been a cryptocurrency miner for the past five years, so I am uniquely qualified to talk about this. Here's a picture of my current Ethereum mining rig. And in the past, I've mined Litecoin as well as a couple altcoins. And I was also mining Bitcoin way back in the day. So I've seen the technologies progress as well as learned a couple things about mining in general. What is mining? Here's my simplified definition. Mining is the process of exchanging electricity for cryptocurrency by using computer hardware. Let's tackle the computer hardware bit first. In order to be a cryptocurrency miner, you have to buy some hardware that will allow you to mine. We're not going to go into cloud mining contracts in this video. Depending on what you want to mine, you'll have to purchase a different type of equipment. The two main categories of equipment are graphics cards, just normal computer graphics cards, as well as application-specific integrated circuits, or ASICs. Graphics cards will allow you to do something called GPU mining, and you'll get currencies like Ethereum and Zcash and a couple other ones by doing it. Usually these have a lower barrier to entry because graphics cards are a lot more available than ASICs and they're a lower cost. So you can do a lot of research into the benefits and pros and cons of the different types of mining, but that'll help you make the decision of what hardware do you want to buy and what coin do you want to mine. Once you've decided on the type of miner you want to use, mining boils down to a very simple equation. Profits equals mined coins minus costs. And in this equation, cost refers to your electricity cost as well as your cost for internet. Now, not everyone considers that because if you're already paying for an internet connection, you don't need a second one in order to start mining. The mined coins in the equation refer to the cryptocurrencies that you generate by mining. Check out the website whattomine.com. You can plug your mining equipment statistics as well as your power costs into their calculator and it'll tell you what you expect to make over a time period. But here's a point of confusion. Your costs for mining are paid for in regular old currency, whereas the coins that you mine by definition are in cryptocurrency. So you can't currently pay for your power bill using Bitcoin. So you have to sell that Bitcoin on an exchange and withdraw it to your bank account in order to pay for your power bill. If your plan is to sell whatever you mine on an ongoing basis to create a sort of continuous revenue stream, it's kind of hard to quantify exactly what you'll make because the exchange rate for your cryptocurrency will fluctuate sometimes wildly. Check out this chart for Ethereum Canadian dollars and you'll see Someone who is making $1,000 worth of Ethereum per month at the beginning of the month, by the end, they might only be making $500 a month because the exchange rate of Ethereum dropped so drastically. Another relevant point is the payback period on your hardware. After you spend several thousand dollars on mining equipment, you'll probably be pretty eager to get that back. So that means selling your hard-earned cryptocurrency back into a regular old Canadian dollar so you can pay back the bills. But that might be hard to do if the markets take a crash and now your cryptocurrencies are worthless. You might not be able to pay back in the period that you initially calculated. What a lot of people do, and myself included, is mine for the long term. And what this means is we don't sell most of what our miner generates. The reasoning behind this is the crypto asset might go up in price in the future and then you might be able to sell it for more value then than if you were to just sell it as soon as you made it right now. But there's a problem with mining and that is difficulty increase. As time goes on, your mining of any cryptocurrency will decrease in effectiveness. What I mean by that is the difficulty will go up. Now this is programmed into every cryptocurrency, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and that means that the amount of cryptocurrency that you generate per unit of time will go down 
as time goes on. This might not affect you badly if the valuation of the cryptocurrency goes up, so it doesn't really matter that you're making less of it. But here's just a frame of reference. When I first set up my Ethereum miner back in July of 2017, it was bringing in about one Ether per month. Now, my Ethereum miner brings in less than 0.4 Ether per month. So quite a drastic decrease there. And I didn't change anything at all with this miner. Have a look at this chart here. This shows the Ethereum difficulty over time. And you can see over a three month period, the difficulty actually doubled. This means that your miner would be making half as much ether at the end of the chart than it would at the very beginning due to the difficulty increase. Not to throw a wrench in things, but we also have to talk about the inevitable death of mining. The Ethereum Foundation is planning to release a new algorithm for Ethereum called Proof of Stake. What that will do is effectively make mining obsolete. So your beautiful Ethereum miner will no longer be able to mine Ether. You might be able to put it on a different cryptocurrency when that happens, but I think what we're going to see is a trend of mining just declining across the board. Many people agree that mining is not good in the grand scheme of things. It's bad for the environment, it consumes a lot of power, and all we're really trying to do here is maintain a ledger. And with proof of stake and maybe other consensus algorithms, there might be ways for us to do that that are much more power and cost effective. But there might still be something on the horizon. Check out golem.network. These guys are planning to build a distributed supercomputer where you can rent out some of your computing power towards whatever is running on the Golem network. And for doing this, you'll get rewarded in Golem tokens. This is different from mining cryptocurrencies because your computing power is actually going towards something very useful. Imagine using your miner to help with predicting weather patterns or rendering animations or doing some kind of crazy science. That could be a lot more valuable to society than just doing calculations to keep a ledger up and running. However, it's still too early to predict whether these distributed computing power marketplaces will take off and be widely used in the future. So I wouldn't base your mining strategy off of that. So let's sum up. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is research what hardware you wanna buy for your mining operation. This means comparing GPU mining versus ASIC mining and looking in depth at the different options available for you there, as well as looking at the availability of these devices and the payback period at the current market rates. The second thing to do is calculate what you would hope to make by mining, as well as the cost you'd spend for power and internet. So you can come up with a number of how much you'll be making on a month-to-month -month basis. You can use tools like whattomine.com to help you with that. The third thing is to research and keep in mind the inherent risks of cryptocurrency mining. The first one being the value of the crypto token. The second thing to consider is the difficulty increase and the fact that what you mine will go down over time. It's impossible to keep mining the same amount day to day unless you add more hardware or upgrade the existing hardware. And lastly, very important to keep in your mind is the perhaps inevitable death of mining and people switching over to mine different things or maybe it becoming obsolete in general. That's something that might heavily influence your decision if maybe this plan will only work for a year or a little longer. No one can really predict what the future is going to hold and if we're going to continue doing things as we currently do. I hope you found this information informative. Until next time, thanks for watching.